Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of Roblox Game Development. Today we will have two episodes of Roblox Game Development to make up for Wednesday when we didn't have any. Um, but in this episode, I'm going to take the time to explain this GUI uh, because Adam Bonian, a very, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that by the way, a very active and helpful viewer and subscriber of mine, um, pointed out that last episode was confusing. And I apologize for that. So I'm going to hopefully be able to make up for it. So let's go to the Explorer. Alright. And go to Storage UI. Go to Shop GUI. Alright, so I should have helped you guys. I really should have. Okay? So here's what... If you guys are wanting to make the same GUI I have, I really should have showed you guys me making this GUI. Right? Yeah, I should have. So I apologize. But inside we have Shop GUI, and inside we have a color 3 value called Button Disabled, which I'll, I'll get back to these in a minute, just I'm going to list them. Button Enabled, which is, 200, is another color 3. Then Page, which is an int value, okay. And inside we have Shop Toggle, which if we zoom out real quick, there it is. Wait, no. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Way up there, that shop toggle button with the blue highlight over it. Um, that button inside has a very simple script. Um, tools, settings. See, this this is the most annoying thing about Roblox Studio. Okay. Frame equals script.parent.frame. Script.parent.mouse button when click connect function frame.visible equals not frame.visible end. Now what that will do is it's basically like an if statement, okay? If the frame is visible, then this is going to return false because the frame is visible and therefore it's not not visible, okay? But if it is invisible, like frame.visible equals false, then this will return true, okay? I know it's confusing, but it's a very quick way of writing this. So that's, I wrote it efficiently. And then back in the Explorer, we have frame, which is just the whole shop GUI frame. And then we have list page, okay? Inside list page, let's go ahead and zoom out. List page is the actual list. As you can see, if I unselect it, it is actually darker than the rest of the GUI, right? It's all darker than the actual frame it's in, okay? And inside we have our script, which we worked on last episode. But also inside there we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. All different text buttons, which will represent the different numbers of things you can buy on the menu at that time. Um, then at the bottom of this GUI we have the next button, which I'll zoom out to show you guys this stuff in a second. And we have the previous button, both of which will move you back and forth through the pages uh, eventually. And then the text label at the very top just says shop. So let's zoom out and I'll show you guys these again um, now that you know the hierarchy. Okay, so list page. Inside we have the script one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we have the next button, previous button, and the text label. Now with this next and previous button, this is where, if we go back to the Explorer, this is where the button disabled and button enabled become useful. Because the next and previous button, their text color 3 value, or value property, when they're enabled, will equal the value of button enabled. And when they're disabled, like they are right now, they'll equal the value of button dot disabled, or button disabled. It's a value, okay? They'll... That's how we can give the user visual feedback that they're not useful, okay? That's what we're going to do, right there. So product price, product price, product price, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully I've explained this better now. So we're going to go back into the script that's in this page, and now I'm going to recover this. So we made a variable called page, which went all the way up to the page int value right here, okay? Then list, which equals script.parent, which is just this list page frame. 
and then products equals game dot lighting dot shot products which we covered that yesterday and then there's a function load products um, which is called every time the page changes and right when it loads the first time we call load products so pn equals page dot value um, and then first product ID equals PN times six and we went over the rest right then just down here list I dot dot which is one two three four five six right that text equals the products name and the products price correct okay hopefully I've taken the last six minutes or five minutes or so and I've explained this well okay so next up we're going to add to this um, why can't I think of this? This function, and we're going to make a. Uh, we're going to make it to where you can actually buy stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here, or actually right here. Function, purchase. Um. Yeah, we'll just go with purchase. Actually, purchase. Uh, I yeah. Uh, button ID okay and what that will feed in is one two three four five or six depending on which button clicked it and inside this purchase we're going to do the same kind of thing as we did here pn equals page dot value and then product ID equals I plus pn times six okay and if uh, if not products find first child product ID that 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 to concatenate it to a string then return end which just gets us out of this and then this is like an imaginary else because if you've already returned nothing past there is going to be used so it's like an imaginary else um, product equals products product ID dot dot e or quotation marks and then if <clears throat> actually we'll worry about that later okay uh, product clone equals hmm, actually item equals product dot value clone item dot parent equals player and we'll make our player variable in a minute player dot back pack no that's starter pack what is it called is it called starter pack like that yeah no starter gear yeah player dot starter gear and item dot parent Actually, we'll make an item two. Item two equals item clone because we need two instances of it. Parent equals player that backpack. Okay, so what this is doing is it's getting the value of the page, finding the product ID. If the products doesn't contain that product ID, it returns nothing happens. Then it continues product equals products ID product ID blah blah blah. It gets the product which is actually just an object value. The item is then cloned twice and then put into their starter gear, which is what you get every time you die and respawn, and into their backpack. If you wanted, you could remove this and just do it that And actually, we need item two for the backpack. Otherwise, we're just moving item again. So item two dot parent equals player dot backpack. And there we go. Purchase will work it won't subtract from your points right now but it will work after we hook up all of the buttons okay so right here um, what is it okay we'll use this list I thing except we're gonna change it with one and just put it directly in the quotation marks each time that mouse button one click connect 
function uh, purchase one end okay and we're just going to copy that and do that six times that's four five six and then replace the numbers accordingly um, we'll just do this side right now and then we'll move over here two three four five oops five and six okay it's not the most efficient way to do this but it's the easiest way to explain and you guys can probably think of more efficient ways but as long as you have to gain the main concept before you can think of better ways to do stuff okay and inside here we're just going to print the button ID for the sake of printing it so we can have that extra layer extra layer of testing you know so all right when we click this product price it's gonna give us an error attempt to perform ah yeah that that could be a big problem actually we don't have a such thing as I but we do have button ID which is what we need to use is button ID okay not I we need button ID I is when we went through the loop but button ID is actually what we're using so if we click here down at the output if we click any of these we get their ID and now if we click the first one which has light oh there's an error oh I told you guys we were gonna do that and then I never did it we need to make a player variable up here player equals nil okay we're gonna make a function find player and this guys is probably the best way the best way uh, to do this okay it's it doesn't involve counting up okay sure you can do that but anyway player equals player dot parent and we'll actually make uh, player start out as script if player dot class name equals player oops player and actually we want does not equal player then find player this is called this is the main point of today okay I know I've done a lot but I'm trying to make up for not having a video Wednesday and for having a confusing video yesterday this is called a recursive function recursive means it recurs it happens again on its own will what it does is it's changing the players value to player dot parent if the players class name is not player meaning they're not actually a player it does it again it goes up another level because it's recursive okay it starts out at the script and then at the next one if we go to the Explorer real quick so it starts at the script then on the first run it'll go to list page well the class name of list page isn't player it's frame so it's gonna do it again and go up to frame okay well that's frame is still not a player so it's going to do it again and go up to shop GUI well shop GUI again is not a player it's not a frame but it's a starter it's a screen GUI so it's still not a player so it's gonna go up again to starter GUI starter GUI is in the player well the player GUI is so technically we're going up to player GUI not starter GUI but it goes up to the player GUI but that's still not the player it might have the word player in it but it's not player GUI it's not the player it's basic I don't even know what the player GUI technically is but it's not the player so it's going to go up one more level and now finally be the player okay but we're not having to do a for loop we're not having to tell it how many times to do it it automatically figures it out through recursive through a recursive function it recurs as many times as it has to until it meets a certain condition that's recursive functions so at the back of our script we have to start this recursive function so we'll just call find player at least once and then it'll go through itself until player finally gets to be the right thing and now when we press F6 this will work perfectly fine or at least it should that's my plan so we click product price product price 
All of these are going to give us their values, or their button IDs again. And now when we click light 100, would you look at that? We have a light. And let's close this shop. And it's working perfectly fine. Um, if I show you guys, by the way, in a second, I got something to show you after I kill this zombie, of course. Die, zombie! Okay. So we go up to the players in Explorer. Go to players, player one. See, they have a backpack, which if I put this tool away, the tool is back in my backpack, okay? And we have a starter gear, which is when I die, I get that. But backpack, it is completely reset and emptied once I respawn, and then it is given everything for my starter gear. Um, but when I pull out a tool from my backpack, let's go ahead and go to workspace as well. Player one, okay. So I'm going to make this... Explorer not go where it usually does and I'm gonna make it bigger so we can actually see this happen okay so I want you guys hopefully you can see this well um, so I'm gonna pull out this light go ahead and watch the light guys in the Explorer look at that it moved into my player character and when I press light again it moves back to my backpack that's where the tool goes back and forth okay so now I'll place this back where it belongs. Hopefully it's about the same size. Hopefully. I don't know. Probably not. Probably going to be a bit different than it was. But Oh well. Close enough. Um, I'll just edit the videos differently if I have to. Alright. So hopefully I've explained everything better today. We are going to have another video today which will go and we'll talk about how to actually give players the, uh, or take money from the players, but we can't do that in played solo mode because the player entered event doesn't fire and therefore he doesn't get a leaderboard. So we have to do that in a different play mode, which, which can get annoying. All right. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like or the dislike button. Of course, Monday day, I felt about this video and I will catch you guys later.